Thank you. So uh, as a part of our larger discussion on the science transfer project, uh, I'm going to be talking about a capacity building example uh, through the use of a deci decision support tool uh, called FishPath uh, and its application in the Great Lakes. Uh, this project involved members of both the Quantitative Fishery Center at Michigan State uh, as well as members of the GLFC. And the tool was born from a collaborative effort from the Nature Conservancy, uh, NOAA, and CSIRO. So I'm going to spend the first part of this talk uh, talking about fish path itself. Uh, and I want to start with talking about the motivation behind building the tool. And that starts with just this very high level uh, conception of the basic building blocks of an effective management strategy. So you have uh, the collection of data. You have the utilization of this data to assess the stock in some way. Uh, this will then impact your management measures. And you also need the ability to adapt to a changing system and uncertain dynamics. So in certain cases, you may have enough resources to implement uh, complex stock assessment models uh, that help inform management measures. Uh, but this, uh, this is not always the case. Uh, and in some cases, you may have fisheries that are data limited or capacity limited. Uh, and these are often coastal uh, inland systems or small scale fisheries. Uh, and there are options uh, in dealing with this, the lack of knowledge, but often these are limited um, by uh, a lack of capacity. So these were the motivating factors uh, for the development of the fish path tool. So what is fish path? Uh, I'm going to start by just looking directly on their website. So this is fishpath.org. If you scroll down a little bit, they have this paragraph that just kind of describes it in broad terms. And I want to highlight this sentence uh, in particular. So its main component, uh, main element, is a stakeholder engagement process guided by the online, online fish path decision support tool. So this is both a process that engages stakeholders, and it is also a tool that helps to guide that discuss discussion. Um, so this is, uh, I'm going to be talking about the fish path tool and the process. Uh, and I kind of want to emphasize that those are basically one and the same thing. You can certainly go through the tool on your own. I would encourage that as well. Um, but when it comes to actually looking through the options, all of the things that you get from the use of the tool, uh, there's really no replacement for uh, the involvement of stakeholders in this process. This is another thing uh, on their website that I, I want to point out. So this is an interactive map that you can, uh, you can look through and you can click on each of these icons to see uh, where the tool has been applied in the past. Uh, and I mainly bring this up because I want to point out that most of these are in marine and coastal fisheries. And uh, this the use of fish path here in the Great Lakes uh, is one of the first applications in freshwater fisheries. So the tool itself consists of a questionnaire that comprises three sections, data collection, stock assessment, and management measures. All of these implement uh, multiple sources of knowledge of the fishery in question. And when you go through the questionnaire, it will provide you with uh, three uh, short lists of feasible options for each of these sections. So list of data collection options, stock assessment options, and management measures and it will provide various uh, criteria and uh, other uh, caveats uh, associated with those options that you may want to consider based on your answers to the questionnaire. Uh, this again, I just kind of wanted to bring this up, uh, not to go into too much detail, but just to kind of emphasize the importance uh, of stakeholder involvement uh, in this process uh, where we're you know, building capacity, we're bridging knowledge gaps, uh, and we're kind of bringing that all together to provide options uh, for data collection, management, uh, and uh, stock assessment. So we've talked about what the fish path tool uh, can do, but I think it's also important to recognize what it can't do and to talk about its limitations. Uh, in particular, I want to kind of hone in on this particular fact. Uh, you, you know, you may think you're going through the tool and it's going to spit out one option that is the most ideal thing. And uh, that's not really the case. It's really there to kind of help guide the discussion and provide you with a list of options um, that can that'll essentially provide you with criteria as to 
uh, whether or not uh, these options are feasible given the information that you have for your particular fishery. So I just kind of want to point that out. It's not here to recommend a specific option. It's not trying to tell you where or how to fish, um, but it's mainly there to kind of help guide the discussion. So I want to provide a few examples of the questions that are provided uh, in the fish path tool. So some of these are simple yes or no questions. So uh, is fishing effort data available by location? Some of these might go into uh, uh, questions where you need to uh, provide a ranked answer. So in particular, this one, rank the leadership strength of the entity that has the most responsibility to design and implement management measures. So in this case, you're ranking this as low, moderate, or high. And then there may be other ones where you have, I know this is a, a little bit small, I'm even having trouble uh, seeing it myself, uh, are boundaries uh, of any spatial restrictions clearly understood and easily enforceable. And so in this case, you, you may say that, yeah, the boundaries are clearly known or they're not. You also may say that they are easily enforceable or they're not easily enforceable. Um, and in some cases, these, uh, these questions may be a judgment call depending on uh, who you have in the room. And in that case, uh, you may wish to add a bookmark, come back to this question later. It's also, you can kind of add a note and say that, you know, yeah, we think, it's, we think it's one of these options, but there's something else to consider that's specific to this fishery that the question does not cover. So you can put these in the notes and when you actually go to look at the results, you can actually go back and take a look at the way that you've answered these questions uh, and that will help you to sort through these answers. So one of the examples uh, of what you will get um, from one of these questionnaires, so this is from the assessment section. Uh, this is a short list of results. Uh, this is only a subsection of them, but I just kind of wanted to, to show uh, what the results page looks like. So you'll get this list of options here. Um, so some of these, you know, you might have uh, catch curve analysis, booster regression trees, uh, things along those lines. Uh, and you can actually go through, you can narrow these options, you can sort them based on different categories. This assessment tier here, this is kind of showing the uh, essentially the, the amount of data that you're going to need for these particular options. Uh, and two things I want to point out here as well are these columns labeled criteria and caveats. So the criteria, these are the minimum conditions that are required to undertake an option. So in all these cases we have, you know, uh, these, these boxes, these are cover, colored uh, green, yellow, and red. If any of these boxes were black, that essentially means that you do not meet the criteria to do these options. That essentially just means that uh, you do not have the data to uh, accomplish these options. In the case of all of these, these are sorted by uh, options that we, that we do have the capacity to do. Um, but in other cases, you may not. And then another thing to focus on is, are, are these caveats. Uh, and so these are cautionary or positive considerations about implementing uh, certain options. And this is based on your an answers to the questions, uh, as are the criteria. Um, but these are things that aren't necessarily going to prevent you from implementing certain actions, but they're just there to kind of tell you, uh, these are the things that you need to consider when implementing these options. So in the case of the green ones, it might say, oh, this is probably a good uh, method given, given the data that you have, but there may also be red ones where it's like, well, you know, you may want to consider that, you know, these deal with very uncertain conditions and you may want to think a little bit more about that before implementing those options. So now to go into the specific uh, project goals. So this uh, project, uh, the main goals here were to uh, essentially build the capacity for the application of fish bath in the Laurentian Great Lakes Basin and to engage stakeholders in its use. So the first objective of this was training. So we essentially wanted to have the option to, uh, for the use of fish path in the Great Lakes by having individuals in both the Quantitative Fishery Center and the Great Lakes Fishery Commission trained in its application. Uh, the training was provided by the Nature Conservancy 
and was conducted over nine one and a half hour Zoom sessions uh, from May to September 2021. Uh, I know I had a, a screenshot of the Zoom screen, but I could not find it, but uh, this is close enough. This is probably what it looked like. And so seven people across the QFC and GLFC uh, were trained. Uh, so we had, we had members of both the QFC and GLFC uh, trained in the use. And then the second objective to this uh, was to then apply the tool uh, using two case studies. So one of these was the Ohio Lake Erie whitefish trap net fishery, and the other was the Ontario Thunder Bay Cisco gillnet fishery. So I'm gonna focus on the second one just for the sake of time. Uh, and uh, it's important to note that, um, you know, we, we recognize that these two case studies are, in a sense, really not data limited, um, but these are fisheries that uh, we thought could uh, accommodate the use of fish path, and we also wanted to start with fisheries that were uh, generally well operating and relatively uh, non-controversial for our test cases. So these were uh, cases where we engaged um, with agency personnel uh, and fishers in the room, so this is an image from uh, our workshop in Thunder Bay. So to go into detail uh, about the Thunder Bay uh, Cisco gillnet fishery, this is a relatively small scale fishery uh, with an annual harvest of about uh, 250,000 pounds, equivalent to approximately 210,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, it is seasonal, so it is conducted uh, in the fall. It is a limited access fishery. Uh, you only have a small number of licensees. And the fishery primarily targets uh, females for the row market. Um, some of the harvest is as uh, smoked cisco. So there's quite a bit of data collection uh, for the fishery. Both harvest and effort are reported by the licensees uh, as a condition of license on daily catch reports. Uh, the OMN RF uh, also collects uh, biological samples for age, length, sex, and other information from the harvest. In addition, there is an acoustic survey to estimate the relative abundance and spawning stock biomass. The USGS also conducts a bottom trawl survey to estimate recruitment. Uh, and the OMNRF conducts uh, fish community gillnet surveys uh, annually. Uh, so currently the fishery is uh, managed using individual quotas, which are alloc allocated annually based on stock assessment results, uh, focusing on a change in biomass uh, from the, uh, the acoustic survey, uh, and whether the licensee's quota in the previous year was attained. So I know this is a little small, but the these are some of the guidelines for the quota adjustment. So for example, if, uh, if the stock is up and the quotas had been achieved, there is a 10% increase in the quota, and there are other options here. Um, that determine uh, how these uh, quotas are adjusted from year to year. Um, so, uh, and then, okay. So we went through the questionnaire uh, with, the, uh, with the group and uh, after completing the questionnaire and integrating with the FishPath database, a uh, number of options for consideration were identified based on the available data and potential management measures uh, that could be considered. So in this case, uh, the list uh, for each of these uh, sections was relatively large uh, because of the amount of data collected. Uh, the group went through a narrowing process. We evaluated the pros and cons uh, of each uh, available option uh, and narrowed these down to a suite of options for consideration. Uh, in many cases, these options were already being implemented for the fishery. Um, so, uh, but however, with the assessment options, there were a number that could be considered given the existing measures and the data being collected. Uh, and these were options that could be built directly into the current management process if desired. So again, the fishery is uh, very well, well assessed. Uh, most of these data options and uh, most of the data options are currently being implemented. The stakeholders did express a need to uh, define thresholds for increases and decreases in the stock, uh, as well as management measures uh, that were more transparent. And it was also expressed in some cases uh, that in some cases, some of the assessment methods uh, may not need to be applied annually, which is a potential cost saving measure. And overall, the current management strategy allows for agencies and fishers to be more proactive uh, and get out in, in front of any potential need um, for management measures, uh, a change of management measures before they are necessary. 
So in conclusion, uh, going back to our uh, project goals, uh, our main goal was to uh, train uh, QFC and JLFC personnel uh, in the use of fish path. So this is now an option that is available uh, in the Great Lakes. Uh, and so we now have the uh, capacity to engage stakeholders in the fish path process. Uh, through our use of the tool, we demonstrated that the uh, tool can identify appropriate uh, data collection, stock assessment, and fishery management options. Uh, and more importantly, just kind of going back to the conception of the science transfer uh, program, uh, this tool can also be used to identify knowledge gaps. So it's not only I identifying what we know, but it's also identifying what we don't know and helping to sort out options um, based on uh, the gaps in knowledge that we have. Uh, and that can help to guide these uh, fisheries to being more sustainable. And so lastly, uh, you know, I've been talking about, uh, again, the, the fish path tool and the process. And again, those are, those are essentially one and the same thing. And one of the components to this is the, you know, the engagement of stakeholders. Uh, and this is a, a component that is crucial. So this tool is great for uh, identifying potential options. Again, you can go through the tool yourself and you can identify what options you think should be implemented. But Involving stakeholder, uh, and stakeholders in the process uh, allows for the buy-in for the implementation of these options. Uh, and more importantly, it's, uh, it's you know, very important for relationship and trust building. And uh, that's all I have, so thank you.